All right, footy's back. Welcome to AFLW Today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly, as we rip into the second half of the season preview. Just like the first episode, still in the jacket from Tuesday night, I'm joined by (laughs) Bryony Dawson. (laughs) Absolutely. Thank you for having me again, Alex. I love this jacket. I won't ever take it off. Yeah. And across from the West, we have code sports journalist, superstar, and just bringing us all the good goss from the West, we have Eliza Riley. What's up, Eliza? Hello, yes, um, far removed, but here in spirit and studio with you guys. But <laughs> we, we love our footy out west. I think it's going to be a really exciting season for, for both our teams. With three obviously looking to push back into finals and the Daisy Pierce effect faking, um, taking full effect in mm-hmm. Perth. I like it. We'll have a bit to talk about that when we get to West Coast. But before we get started, please follow us on YouTube at AFL Today, wherever you get a good podcast. Again, AFL Today, like and subscribe. Also, AFLW Today across the socials, and it's AFLW Today AU on X. All right, we've done the first nine teams, except for Frio. We skipped the alphabet there because Mm -hmm. we've got Eliza here. Uh, Now, I want to ask this because it came up in just some research this morning, Eliza, that the derby is going to get moved from Optus Stadium this season. So we won't bring that up in the preview, but we can talk about this now. What's going on there? Well, first of all, Alex, it is the derby. Oh. I hate to break it to you, but Western pronunciation, it's a bit different out here, so please stick <laughs> to the preferred pronunciation, derby. Please build that um, wall. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to, glad to see you've been reading my articles on, on Code Sports. Yes, there is uh, a chance that, the, the Western Derby looks like Optus Stadium was the venue that was named in the fixture announcement. Everyone was really excited about this as well because we have lo- had a few derbies at Optus Stadium and it's just so good seeing the pinnacle of women's football on the you know the Premier Stadium in WA. Mm. Uh, so it's an Eagles home game. West Coast decided, look, we're going to take it back to Optus Stadium. It hasn't been there for a couple of years because the the league has preferred to sort of stick to these community heartland venues. But West Coast said, no, nah, you know, stuff that we're going to, you know, celebrate the Daisy Pierce party and the, the biggest stadium in <laughs> WA, 60,000 capacity. And there was also a, a, you know, intended partnership with Telephone, which is obviously a big charity oh, event course. over here in WA that they wanted to sell a lot of tickets for and try and break that attendance record. Now, we're still waiting an official sort of decision and confirmation, but my mail is that um, there has been a fair bit of back and forth over the stadium. We obviously have had a few turf concerns at Optus throughout the season. It's pretty slippery at the moment. And it doesn't look like it's going to improve uh, anytime soon unless it does get a big sort of break from action. And there's also um, wrapped up in that there's a fair cost to operate the stadium. And uh, apparently for a waffle grand final, you know, our Premier State League to break even, they need a crowd of around 25,000, which is, you know, far and away exceeding, you know, some of the normal home and away crowds we get in the AFLW. So, so a bit to play out, but it seems that there could be a venue shift on the horizon. I hate it. If only there was people who had a lot of money in the West to yeah, right. invest in. Uh... Only if there was like another <laughs> couple of Hungry Jacks franchises going around. <laughs> but that's just, that sucks. Like you play yeah. the Wallabies there, they rip up the turf, but now nah, let's let's push the W away. I hate it because it would have been cool to see a derby there. Don't Again, even get me started. Derby, derby. Just, you know, it's I'm, looking pretty guy when they haven't even put the derby on the Optus Stadium, what's on oh, section yeah. of their website. When every other scorches, you know, cricket fiction on there. Every day I'm refreshing going, where's the derby? Please, please, please. But it hasn't popped up mm. yet, which yeah, I think tells that. us a bit of a story. Well, I think that one may have been cooked. So let's uh, let's rip into the Fremantle Dockers here. <laughs> three minutes on the clock, Spence. The siren will blast, Eliza, if we go over three minutes here. There's your warning. Last season, they were four and six and 13th. They have five home games, uh, as well as the derby at, well, we now don't know. And they've got to travel interstate five times. Two from two in match sim, and they, they look ready to go. I honestly think, having watched them, they're probably one of the informed teams in the preseason. Mm -hmm. Uh, Preseason is very different to the season proper, but I've been really impressed with the way Fremantle have attacked this preseason. And no Ange Stannett, no Kiara Bowers. Obviously, Ange has done her knee. Um, You know, Kiara has announced she's pregnant, which is amazing news, but will mean she's sit out the season. Those are Fremantle's two best players yeah. you know we're talking best and fairest uh former w medalist in kiara bowers 
and they've seemed to take that in their stride and just found different um, ways to, you know, fill those roles. And Fremantle were really structured and um, held up really well in both those preseason games. So I, I think they, they're going to make that return to finals. Ooh, I like it. You are high on them. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, going through the list and, and watching them play in the pracking matches and that kind of stuff, loving Ash Braz um, in there and, and Gab Newton as well for some firepower up forward. I think I think they're going to do really well this season. They seem to have the talent to make the finals if everyone stays fit. Yeah, everyone stays fit. No one gets injured, you know, and, <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, they just seem to be gelling really well together. Where have you got them finishing, yeah. Eliza? I think sort of bottom half of the top eight, but the big caveat to that, you said keeping this list fit. Mm. They've actually played on the weekend against Collingwood eight girls over the age of 30. So, you know, when you start to get to that, that age of your career, um, you, you're closer to the end than you are the start. I, I don't think that's a stretch to say. And keeping these girls, their leaders on the park, I reckon it's going to be pretty crucial to how far they go this season. And, of course, we've had the captaincy switch as well. So. Yeah. Ali Miller has been booted in favour of Ann Stannett, who won't play a single game this season. Wrote an article about that. Not yep. sure I agree with it, but mm. we'll see how it unfolds. I think because Stannett is just such a big uh, personality and in, in, in influential um, part of that yeah. that team. Um, yeah, it's definitely controversial for sure, but um, but I think they know what they're doing and I think it's very strategic and um, I'm, I'm really excited to watch Fremantle this season. So you've got them in your top eight? I actually do. I actually do. Um, same same as you, Eliza. I think, yeah, the bottom of the top eight somewhere. I've got them just missing because I've okay. already used a lot of my top eight bullets <laughs> as well. So it's not <laughs> ideal. Uh, my vibe player for this team, Gabby Newton, first season from the Dogs. Yeah. Pure vibes. All right, let's get to the premiership favourites. Well, they are, in my view, I haven't even looked to see his favourites. I'm assuming they are. It is the North Melbourne Kangaroos. The stats guy's over there in the corner losing his mind. Last season went seven and three, somehow lost that grand final to Brisbane. Four home games as well as another two in Tassie. And they've got to travel five times, but as said, two of them as the home team in Tassie. They're the flag favourites, right? I think so. For in, in in my point of view, yes. I think that the heartbreak from last year will have eaten them up uh, over the off season and um yeah Carney will be getting into yeah. it and uh and they'll be they'll be they'll be wanting. Yeah. Eliza? Absolutely. Like they've been this team who've been incrementally improving for years now. You know, they made the qualifying final, they made a prelim, they made a grand final, lost it. And I think the trajectory is just going to continue to go up for them and the the premiership is the next bucket list item to tick off. And we know them last year as the best defence in the AFLW and, look, they've gone away and pinched Libby Birch from Melbourne, which is going to make that defence even better. Um, so I think if they can just keep to get those those scores on the board and they have, you know, three of the most exciting sort of key forwards mm -hmm. down there in the comp as well, big Charlie Randall fan. Um, but I think that once it all gels for them, they're going to be extremely hard to beat. Ash Riddell had 38 touches on the weekend. I know it was the Giants, but has the record for the most touches in a game. Jasmine Garner, more time in the midfield. Like You look at the stat line of Jasmine Garner throughout her career. Every year, the average disposal goes up. This is the year where she just goes, hey, I'm the best. Watch this. Yeah. I got big vibes on that. But the big vibe player, I can't tell because it's like, is it Riddell? Is it Garner? Burton, King, Kearney? Like, where do I go with the it's vibes? All, I, think I think it's a whole team vibe. Yeah, that's what that's what I was about to say. I think it's the whole team. I think it it's theirs to lose this year. Um, I reckon I reckon they're really up yeah. for it. Yep. Eliza? Yeah, absolutely. They're premiership favourites for mine. And I think nine of the eight captains agree uh, based on that captain's survey yesterday. Yeah. Nine of the eight um, are tipping them to, to make that grand final. And once you're in the grand final, anything can happen, can't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think anything but a premiership's a failure for North this year. Woo! Yeah, I think Woo! this is them. I'm putting, putting it on the ground. North Melbourne will win the flag this year. Okay. Done. done. Let's get to the Melbourne Demons. Last season went eight and two, bounced out in straight sets in the most Melbourne Demons thing ever to sum up their club as a whole recently. They travel interstate three times this season. They lost to Carlton in match sim, which seemingly is a worry, and then they lost to Port Adelaide. Not great coming into a season, and then Liv Purcell, she's got a broken face. Yeah. So not ideal. 
big shout out to um, Liv Purcell because that she re- she really copped it. She got, yeah. got a concussion as well in that and had, had to stay overnight and yeah, and, and yeah to wait She's till the swelling to go. That yeah, sucks. Yeah, so yeah, I, that's a horrific um, accident. So yeah, shout out to her. <laughs> um, Mel, I think Melbourne are really going to struggle this season. They got um, absolutely gutted. They lost uh, Libby Birch, Maddie Gay, Casey Sheriff, Eliza West, Charlotte Wilson. Like that's not good. That, that's a lot of that's a lot of your team. Um, so uh, they're they're going to be a big slider yeah. for Ooh. me. Ooh, I like it, Eliza. How are you feeling about the D's? Yeah, tend to agree. I just think they've lost far too much experience in this off season. Um, but a you know mixed in year coach team is always going to find a way and be there there and abouts. But I think they are probably going to drop off and drop out of that big four that we've had for so many seasons down the AFLW. And Taylor Harris as well has had a very interesting off season. She's a bit of a watch for mine. Um, obviously, a bit of conjecture about her. Mid preseason trip to Paris, Harris in Paris, and she's Ooh. got on off the thirty hour flight and uh, pulled a bit of a quad in some match simulation. So she hasn't had much of a preseason. The demons want to try her in a new role this season behind the ball. Um, so if she doesn't perform in that, I reckon there'll be some questions asked about her preparations as well. So I'm glad that was brought up. I had it in the notes that we need to talk about it. Yeah. Like, had the injury, had a shoulder injury before going to Paris, then comes back and does a quad. Like I get it, there was an opportunity over there for to further Taylor's career with branding and stuff. But the optics just look bad coming into preseason doing an injury. Like we talk about old mate no mates on the AFL show. Mm. Everyone in that team busting their ass in preseason. Taylor goes to Paris, comebacks and gets injured. It's that team bus going righto. Like seriously, I disagree. Yep, I disagree. I mean, I don't think that you can ever question Taylor Harris's work work ethic. No. She works her butt off. She no. went, she had a shoulder injury. Okay, she might have needed some time off. Um, going to Paris, I think, and being with other elite athletes at the top of your game, we know footy's not just physical. We know it's mental as well, and I think you need to really yeah. look at that as an option. Um you get better the better the people you are around, and I just I mean think... I'd hang out with Gabby Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I don't think she needs to cop all the the she's getting for going yep. over there. It's unfortunate that she hasn't had the the traditional prep that she's yep. needed. But I reckon Taylor Harris is still Taylor Harris, and um, I don't think you can ever question her work ethic. So I've got nothing against it. I'm just saying the optics are bad that she's come back and bunged a quad straight away. Mm. It's, the old not ideal is that mm. one. Um, Kate Hoare, probably not going to play in the midfield now, as she had in the first preseason yep. game, given uh, Olivia Purcell's injured. Why not play her as a high half forward? Agreed. Yeah. Can I make my big call? Go. Good. They're going to miss the eight. <laughs> oh, you reckon they're sliding that far? Yep. I'll let you have that. Oh, I'm I'm here with my popcorn. Yeah. Ready to go yeah. on Melbourne. Yeah. What about you, Eliza? What do you have them finishing this year? I think in that sort of 8 to 12 bracket, I could see them pinching the last or second last spot in the 8, but I I tend to agree that they're going to drop off the pace this year. Vibes player, shout out, Wagga Zone, Gabby Colvin. She is the daughter of a horse trainer. I'm the son of a trainer. We go way back. Love Gab (laughs) Colvin. All right, Port Adelaide Power, last season, 2-7-1 and and 15th. They have six home games. They travel five times interstate this year now. Interesting stuff coming out in the last couple of days at Port Adelaide. Hannah Ewings, out for the season, has been stood down by the club for apparent professionalism issues. Well, note, she's only 20, so got a lot of footy ahead of her, but this is a big story. That's a huge story. Um, to be stood down for the whole season yeah. and not a couple of games, There's there's got to be something juicy in there. There was, in the article, we can find at Code Sports, uh, talking about not training at the levels that they want and sort of pushing themselves to be an elite athlete, things like that. So it's it doesn't sound good, does it, Eliza? Yeah, no, certainly not. Um, she absolutely burst onto the scene, didn't she? But then she, I think last season we saw her drop off the pace a little bit and whether that's related to these fresh sort of professionalism concerns, I think there might be a bit of a link there um, and just, you know, it's been obviously reported that she hasn't quite committed to the the fitness regime that's underway at Port Adelaide and then wanting to improve and be- become better runners. So 
I guess the thing to note is that Port Adelaide have sort of phrased it as she's taken some personal time as well. So maybe it was a bit of a joint decision between mm. the two parties that she wasn't quite ready to, to take that next step and Port Adelaide felt that way as well. But without Ewings, they're also going to be missing this season. Lauren Young, who is one of the best young talents in the AFLW, probably would have been number one pick contention had she not been signed up um, before the draft as one of Port Adelaide's sort of list concessions. So two absolute stars of the future won't be running out for the power this year. Hmm. So they were well beaten by Adelaide in the match scene, which understandable. Side yeah. note, that teal kit that they wore in that match, awesome. Yeah. Love a good kit. Probably my favourite kit I've seen so far. But Love a good kit. to prison bars this year. Yeah, well, the prison bars are getting worn in the showdown in round one, so I can't wait for that. I but love it. I just Bring loved it the teal. It yeah. looked cool. It does look nice. Yeah. Uh, their defence seems a massive issue, though. Yeah, I mean... The the one to watch down there is Janelle Cuthbertson, who's been appointed captain this year. I love um, Janelle. I think she's one of the best key defenders in the AFLW, but she has just been absolutely smashed by injury these past few years, just cannot get a clean run of it and has been ruled out of, you know, half of seasons, yeah. whole seasons, whatnot, with injury after injury. So if she can stay fit and available, she's going to be their pillar down there and I think strengthen them up um, behind the ball a whole heap. But that's a big if because she unfortunately just hasn't been able to have a clean run at it. Yeah, it's 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 just all going to be about avoiding these injuries. I mean, we've seen it so many mm. in the practice match. It's just ACL after ACL, and it just breaks my heart every We're about single to talk time. About Richmond too. Oh. Yeah, uh, Port Adelaide, they're like. 15th to 16th, like they're not going to bottom out and be last, but they're not going to be sort of challenging for top eight. I agree. I'm excited to see um, Kirsty Lamb in there and what she can do. Um, but, yeah, I don't yeah. think it's – it's she's making too yeah. much of an impact. I tend to disagree. I think they'll be knocking on the door at the top eight. Ooh. I see them as one of the teams taking a step this year, and it's because of two young guns in Sinead Goody and Piper Window, who they basically got for free in the draft in the pre-signing period. Massive wraps on those girls coming out of Adelaide and I think if they can keep everything on the park and um, take the next steps under Lauren Arnell, who is pregnant, by the way. Um, so she has oh, wow. um, two brains helping her pull this team together. <laughs> a lot of brains. <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon we could see a fair bit of improvement from the power this year. Oh, okay. This I'm is why that. we sack stats guy. We get this type of, you know, journalism and professionalism yes. and I love it. My vibe player, Gemma Horton. Yeah. Let's get to Richmond. Last season, 5-5 five and five in 10th, not 9th, and thankfully. Uh, travel four times interstate this season. They've also got Dreamtime up in Darwin. They got hit with an ACL already. It is the 10th ACL that Richmond have had across their whole club program in 2024 with Montana McKinnon going down. Last season felt like a fail. Yeah, Richmond's another one of those teams for me that um, you look at their list – and you just go, this should be an incredible team and they should really be getting some good results. And I know that they've had a lot of injuries, um, but I just I just want them to lift um, yeah. and I don't know what they've got to do to get there. That's, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I reckon they, they were smashed by injury last year as well. I remember a patch in the middle of the year where they just could not get their best players on the park and they yeah. lost a real tight one to Fremantle. Which if they won that, I think it would have tipped them into the eight. Don't quote me on that, but I'll go yeah, and have a look at the last year. It would have because they belted Collingwood in the final round to make it five and five. So if they win that game, mm -hmm. they're six and four and in the yeah. in the top. Yeah. So that yeah, that game I reckon was the turning point in a way because Fremantle, well, full credit to them, they played extremely well, but Richmond, um, you know, struggled to get their best players on the park. But Mon Conti, BNF, can't wait to see her. Defend that crown, isn't she just incredible? Uh, like when when you look at her play, she is just she's elite. She is the epitome of elite. She's playing elite basketball. She is doing exactly what she was put on this earth to do, and I love watching well, her. I wish I had like a third of that talent. Like I could put my life to use of some yeah. sort instead of talking about footy. Yeah, uh, Katie Brennan looks in good form yeah, from the preseason and is. My vibes player, Ellie McKenzie, is she the spark for the Tigers? She's got to be. Like, she's another one who's mm. had her injury battles in the past. And she's basically like a bit of a new recruit this year, I reckon. And, um, you know, injected straight back into that midfield, we hope. Um, she could absolutely take the next step and be one of the, you know, sort of premier players in the competition this year if everything goes to plan. All right. Where do we have them finishing? 
bottom oh. half of the top eight for mine. I reckon they they don't make the top four, but yeah. they'll climb into finals. I think with that natural improvement, they'll get there. I love that optimism, Eliza. <laughs> I really do, and I and I want that for them. I really do. I think they're just out of the eight. I've got them. Yeah, nine, nine, ten, or eleven. I've got them in that that seven to ten bracket. Yeah. Where I've got a few teams going on at the moment. Which, on the fence, you are. Uh, yeah, real Switzerland vibes yeah. here. Let's get to St Kilda. Uh, last season, they were a team that finished six and four and missed out on the finals due to having a shoddy percentage. They travel into state three times this season. They belted North uh, in preseason. Anyone who beats North is a belting in my consideration. And they had a strong win over West Coast as well. So, Eliza, take us through the Saints. You got to see them up close. Yeah, and I'm honestly pretty excited about this team this year. They've been building and building under Nick Dal Santo. Mm-hmm. Had a pretty poor start to last season, but then came charging home in the back end mm. and just missed out on making the finals. But one player, I think, is going to take the next step this year. And she's been a big name for a while now, but Jessie Warlaw, she kicked four goals against the Eagles, took five contested marks. She absolutely dominated. And I reckon um, we've seen her play a bit in the ruck and sort of it's, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul a little bit, taking her out of that forward line. Yeah. So she can hang around and be that focal point for the Saints. I reckon she's going to be the leading goal kicker in the AFLW this year. I think we've already got the tip for the leading goal kicker there that we'll get to later. I yeah. like it. Yeah, I I tend to agree. Um, she is really uh, is really building, um, but I think this Saint Til- Saint Kilda team is really building as well. And exactly what you said, Nick Del Santos had a plan, uh, and he's been able to build on that year after year. And yeah. I think this is the year where they really take it um, to the next level. Their list looks um, really really good, um, and yeah, I think I think we'll be surprised. Yeah. Uh, they've got some good inside mids as well, so they'll be good around the contested footy too. Ella Friend is the vibes player yeah. for all those playing at home. So I have the D's, D's missing because I have the, the Saints jumping in. I think uh, Saints are definitely in the top eight, yeah. bottom of the eight. I think they make finals as well. Lambert and Vesley in the midfield, as you mentioned, look dominant in that practice match. There is just a bit of a watch on Patrikios, who was pulled from that game at halftime with a foot injury, yeah. so hopefully she's right to go in round one. I was going to say, I thought she looked all right too in the bits mm. that I watched. Let's get to my favourite team, the Sydney Swans. <laughs> Last season came from having not won a game the year before, finishing eighth, six and four, belted uh, Gold Coast in the elimination final, and then... Let's not talk about what happened in Adelaide. That sucked. Uh, five travelling games interstate this season, but let's be honest, they had the draw to make the finals last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did badly miss Ali Morfitt and Privatelli in that final against Adelaide in that show. They just got completely blown off the park, but Ali Morfitt signed for four more years, so all Swans fans, very happy. Mm. Hasn't played in the preseason, though. Slightly concerned. Mm. Um, I'm excited for your Swannies. I am really excited for them. Um, I mean, they did that. You're right. They did have the draw last year to help them do a couple of things. Um, But I also think that they can do a couple of things on their own as well. What are you thinking, Eliza? I've got big ups on the Swans as well. I hate to pump up their tyres with a big Swans man in the room. But Montana Ham, she's basically like a new recruit for them this year. Like Mm. she obviously had battles with injury barely trained with that stress fracture in her foot. And I reckon she's going to go straight yeah. back into the midfield and be one of the, the best players in the competition this year. And five goals and 20 touches in the VFLW a couple months ago probably speaks to that a little bit. The only concern I do have, a bit of a scandal in the off-season with the um, two players, Lexi Hamilton and Paige Shepard, being caught with some white powder of such, and I'm wondering whether that's had a bit of an impact on their ah. um, preparations, but I reckon this one's had Mind a pretty strong <laughs> Everyone, everyone has one of these scandals. Like, it happened to one of the Hollands brothers last year. It doesn't matter. It's fine. It's We move on. I know there's a suspension. Um, you stole my thunder, though. I've got – because I love Montana Ham, and I was like, this is a breakout season for her and just yeah. going, hey, I'm really good. Uh, Maddie Collier also back yeah. from an ACL – I was concerned how easily Hawthorne disposed of them over the weekend, though. That was slightly worrying given the ease in which they just ran through the midfield and kicked goals. I was mm. like, mm, not good. Uh, Vibes plays Montana Ham. 
Uh, this the obvious one would have been Chloe Malloy, so I was looking outside of the obvious. But if she plays well, the Swans are likely to win. But let's go with Montana Ham. You know I'm a big Chloe Malloy fan. Yes. I just think she was absolutely built to play footy, and she is playing the kind of footy yeah. that she needs to. And she saw the light and came to Sydney as well. Yes, like leaving Collingwood to come to the Swans, as all good people do. She believes <laughs> in the game as a whole, not just the team, and she won. She wants to help build the AFLW, and I just I think she's awesome. Yeah. Where do we have them finishing this year? <clears throat> I'm going to put him bottom of the eight. Fair, fair. Eliza? Same for me, bottom half of the top eight, and I think I've already named like six teams there. But I'm just gonna... <laughs> I think I've put 11 or 12 in yeah. there. So <laughs> Yeah, I'm not good at maths. I'm just a writer. Yeah. So. Does words, not I numbers. was publicly educated, yeah. so, you know. So I have them missing. You that... have them missing? Yeah. Are you what? okay? No, I'm not. <laughs> No, it's just talk us through it. Get it out. You're in a safe place. So they had the draw to do it last year, where they played a lot of the bottom teams. This year, it's like, okay, you've made the eight, so we need to make it a little bit tougher for you. I think there's a couple more games where they have to travel. They've got to go to Coffs Harbour for a home game, which I hate as well. I just think it's going to be a little bit tougher this year. Also, now that this uh, opposition teams would have figured out, it's like. You try and stop Ali Morfitt, that's halfway to getting the W as yeah. well. Yeah, okay. So I think they just miss. If they if they make the eight, I'm cheering. But I think this is a little bit of a regression before they shoot up next year. Let's talk about regression. The West Coast Eagles, who went 2-8 and eight last year, finished 17th. Six home games, five games interstate, obviously. Now, apparently, according to my esteemed co-host and star of this show, they have a cheat code. I, for one, do not believe that this cheat code will help them this season. That being Daisy Pierce as the new coach. Eliza, you've seen two of their preseason games and most of their preseason. So I'll let you go first before Bryony stabs me. <laughs> Look, I tend to think you're pretty bang on. I think she is a cheat code, but you need to know how to apply the cheat code and hack the system. And I don't think the Eagles have the intel yet to do that. I think everyone sort of thought that Daisy was com- going to come in and, you know, sprinkle some magic dust and it was all going to be fixed and they were going to be, you know, a competitive team. But this is a massive sort of cultural reset the Eagles are undertaking at the moment. And it's not going to take one year. It's probably not going to take two, even pushing it for three, which is obviously what she's contracted to be there for. Um, it's just in the past, this this West Coast program hasn't had the support from the club it's needed. The players, uh, you know, most of them are committed. I reckon there has been a few in the past that, are just been pretty happy to be on an AFLW list and not yeah. willing to put in the, the hard yards. So there has been a little bit of complacency there. Daisy represents a change in that. She's, you know, legitimised this program, but it's not going to happen overnight for the Eagles, and I think the preseason results have shown that. Go on. I would have to agree. You were yelling at me in our group chat. <laughs> yeah, because you attacked the fabric, Okay. <laughs> I don't think she's going to sprinkle pixie dust or daisy dust or yeah, whatever. It's daisy and dust. It's daisy dust. Um, but I think what she's going to do over the years is uh, attract the right kind of people to that club okay. and inspire the people at the club. And then they're going to be able to have a great team culture. They're going to be able to have um, people that want to um, perform well and get the, the the glue and the systems going. And I think that that is one of the – the most important things when you have a team is how well they gel, gel together. You know, a champion team is better than yeah. a cha- team of champions. Of so, um, and I think that Daisy is a person that really can bring that out in people. And we've heard reports out of there already of players who are just uh, have grown so much in in the time that she's been there already. So I think the longer she's there, um, the better West Coast are going to get. Yeah. So talk about the games, Eliza, because I thought they've looked bang average in both of their preseason games. They definitely looked bang average against the <laughs> Dockers and Freeho were able to just bang home like so many goals on them and they, they said that their team defence and sort of the way they wanted to attack the game and be a more um, sort of speedy team going forward just didn't come to fruition and struggled to sort of see any vast improvements on what they put on the part last year, whereas... St Kilda, I thought they had a pretty solid burst half of that game and were really able to to keep the ball in their front half, but they just couldn't convert. And that's probably been the tale of West Coast for the past few seasons now, um, just not having that sort of firepower up forward who can consistently find the goals. But 
I think Roxy Rue will help with that. She's been a pretty, um, you know, great addition since crossing from Fremantle in the off season. The one that I'd love to see is a permanent forward, but I'd also love to see is a permanent midfielder is Ella Roberts. And again, you don't have two of her, so you're going to have to pick where she's going to play. And if she sits down forward, I reckon she could be like a sort of 20 goal a year, um, you know, forward, but she's just wow. got to go into that midfield to get it down to the forward line as well. So where do we have them finishing? I'm 14th, 15th, 16th. I think they win two or three games. I I think they're still finishing last. Ooh. Yeah. I won't go that far yet. Eliza? I've got them bottom four and part of that, a world caveat as well, is they have been hit by injury pretty hard already, mm. losing Tilly Sargent to a knee, Annabelle Johnson, then you recruit to a knee, Kaylee Kavanagh, their first round draft pick to a knee, Dana Hooker yeah. is pregnant. She's another one who's going to sit out the season. Very exciting news, but obviously won't be there. And Courtney Rowley as well did her knee in round 10 oh. of last season and won't be available. So pretty injury hit already, unfortunately. A lot, of, a lot of pregnancies. People yeah. have been busy in the off-season, yeah. haven't they? Hey? I mean, good for them. Well done. <laughs> um, is my vibes player Jessica Wrench good to go? Because I went out on a whim here. Oh, absolutely. I watched yes. her on the weekend. She played a half. She has is coming off a slight hamstring niggle, but she played a half. And fun fact about Jess Wrench, she's – what, 18, she's only just lost one of her last baby tooth, apparently. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is a great that's... fun fact. Is that like, I don't know, a bit of an omen or something? Like, I don't know, growing into a woman and ready to take the AFLW by storm, but bit bit random. Yeah. Liked it. Well, I love it. So, yeah, good vibes. There you go. Yeah. Great vibes. Moving on to some not-so-great vibes. It is the Western Bulldogs. Last season were the Wooden Spooners. They are home five times this year. They travel into state. Three times, and they've been hit with an ACL with one of your favourites going down. I know, my little weefy. I just, yeah, as I said to you, my heart broke. I was really yeah. excited for her to go to the Bulldogs. She was, um, you know, saying things like she's the fittest she'd ever been. She was really prepped for the season, really looking forward to it, and then to to go out like that, it's, yeah, it's absolutely um heartbreaking and a losing Kirsty Lamb as well. Um, Celine Moody, um, Gab Newton, like, yeah, they got absolutely gutted. Um, and good old Ellie Blackburn, she stays there and she's, she's ready to go with the Bulldogs for another season, you know. It doesn't look great, does it, Eliza? It was almost like last person out turned the lights off. <laughs> <laughs> It was an oh. exodus. New coach, new head of football, like all these players out the door. But you do get the number one draft pick, and I am pretty excited to see that the double double hyphen in Kirsty Lee Western Turner make her mark on the AFLW. But I think it's going to be a very rough season for the Bulldogs yet again. So they're into a rebuild. Uh, they lost some close ones last year, but it just looks like they 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 in GWS and potentially West Coast are going to be the real strugglers this mm -hmm. season. So if you happen to draw all three of them, your season could be very well set up. Yeah, you're looking pretty happy, aren't you? Yeah, you're like, oh, this is great. Uh, is it just Ellie Blackburn going, I'm, I'm trying, please get on my back here? That's It's some real loyalty. Uh, yeah. Eliza, what do you think, you know, someone like an Ellie Blackburn who is just, she's one of my favourite players, She she's got great skills but like a lot of heart as well what, what do you re think the reasons are the loyalty with the with the Bulldogs I think it just probably speaks to who she is as a person and she's captained that club for so long obviously there is a changing of the guard this year with Dee Berry taking up that role but she's just been there since the absolute inception and she's so desperate to see success again yeah. with this group um you know it can either go one of two ways you're either completely flat unmotivated and decide that it's time to move on or in Ellie's case you know you still got a bit of time left in your career you want to see that uptick before you do um call time and you want to leave the club in a better place than what you found it and that's Ellie yeah, yeah. I think that's really well said you do she wants to see it in a better place yeah, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's sort of what a couple of Richmond like guys in the men's are seeing at the moment a couple of them are going to stay around before they completely jump off and yeah. retire it's like all right, one or two more years to try and get it back on track so Got to respect it. Yeah. Vibes player is Ellie Grigg. I struggled for a vibes player, I'll be honest. Yeah. I'm not getting a lot of positive <laughs> vibes from the dogs, unfortunately. I think they're the wooden spooners. Oh. I agree. Wooden oh. spoon for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with that being the last team that we've done, 
it is prediction time for the season here. So Premier, biggest riser, biggest slider, wooden spoon, best and fairest leading goal kicker. Take us off, Bryony. Okay. So what do you want first? Premier. Premier, uh, North Melbourne. Yep. Biggest riser? St Kilda. Biggest slider? Melbourne. Wooden spoon? Uh, West, West Coast. Best and fairest? Jazzy Garner. And leading goal kicker? Uh, oh. We'll let you think about it. We'll come okay. back to you. Eliza, who have you got for your Premier this season? Going north as well. Lock it in. Yeah. Uh, riser and slider? I'm going Port Adelaide. I've got big ups on them Ooh. and Demons as well. I have to go with Bryony there. Ooh, uh, dogs, obviously, the wooden spoon. Your best and fairest and leading goal kicker, please. Best and fairest, I'm going Mon Conti back to back. Back to back. Oh. That Richmond will take votes off her and yep. she's only going to get better by all reports. Um, and leading goal kicker, Jesse Warlaw, who I may have hinted at a bit earlier. I like jump it. The gun. Uh, clean sweep, North Melbourne for the premiership here. My riser, as I said in the previous show, the bomb rays into the top four. The slider, let's make it a clean sweep. The D's <laughs> out of the eight. So the wooden spoon is the dogs. Jazzy Garner is going to go, I'm the best player in the comp. This is my medal. I deserve one. Not from I deserve one. I'm just purely the best. Give it to me. Mm-hmm. And Talia Randall leading goal kicker. So it's just Jazzy just slotting it to Talia Randall all day. I'm split between you, th- you two because yeah. I think – Talia Randall, yes, because North are going to be better than St. Kilda. They're going to feed her a lot Yeah, they're going to feed her a lot more. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to go Talia as well. All right. This is the most positive North Melbourne show ever. <laughs> <laughs> Stats guy guy's guy. very happy. All right. That is it for the AFLW preseason show. Liza, thanks for jumping on board. Where can everyone find all of your gear throughout the season? Thanks, guys. Just jump on to, to Code Sports and um, get around it. Lots of great content to come throughout the year. And please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, AFL Today. Also, our social media accounts, AFLW Today, AFLW Today AU on Twitter. Also, wherever you get a good podcast, just look up AFL Today. Ronnie. Hey, you felt today. Just pumped up and ready yeah. to go. Footy. Hey, Phil. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you. My pleasure. Please wear a new set of clothes for the next I show. I will. It's an honor, honor and a privilege to be here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, we'll be back next Tuesday, I believe, for our round one preview. So we'll give that one a couple of days to lead in. Big thank you to Eliza for joining in. Shout out to social gal Spence behind the camera, as well as executive producer guy, aka the stats guy. And Gerald, of course, doing all of his wonderful work. Make sure you look after yourselves. Thanks for tuning in to <coughs> AFLW Today. I'm Bryony Dawson and I'm also Alex Donnelly and we'll see you next time. Next time.